Dit is Papa Alpha 0 Echo Tango Echo voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 5 december 2015. Dit is het bulletin van zaterdag. Today I will first introduce our data for today in Dutch and after that the rest of the show will be in English. Vandaag hebben we opnieuw Contestia met de bekende parameters zoals ook op panel ete.nl te vinden. Onder andere 8 tonen bij 355 hertz. Aan het eind van de uitzending hebben we een bijzonder experiment afgekeken trouwens van de site VOA Radiogram.net. We zenden een QR-code uit in 8 PSK 1000 bij 1750 hertz. Er is zo'n vierkant, een soort van getekend dolhof dat je met je smartphone kunt scannen voor meer informatie. Om de afbeelding te ontvangen heb je het programma FL Rap nodig. FL Rap. Ontvangen gaat vervolgens precies zoals gewoonlijk bij 8 PSK 1000 bij 1750 Hz. Als je daarna de binnengekomen tekst selecteert en met de muis naar het vierkantje rechts bij FL Rap sleept, vertaalt FL Rap dat in een punt PNG bestandje met daarin de QR-code. Dus de afbeelding van de QR-code. Dus je moet de tekst selecteren. Dat is duidelijk af, aangegeven, uh, ja, hoe zeg je dat, afgekaderd met een uh, label. Uh, die tekst die moet je selecteren. Die kun je dan slepen naar FL Rap. En dan maakt FL Rap daar een punt PNG bestandje van. Als je de QR-code uit het PNG bestandje met je smartphone scant, dan kom je op een internetpagina met meer informatie over. Ja, ja, dat moet je natuurlijk zelf ontdekken. De QR-code is vrij kort, dus die wordt twee keer achter elkaar uitgezonden met een korte onderbreking. Dus uh, je moet hem namelijk wel foutloos binnenkrijgen. Our weekend shows are in English. In addition to our usual data with Contestia, we will also send a QR-code. Contestia will be in 8 tones at 355Hz. Complete info you can find on www.papaalpha0echotangoecho.nl At the end of the show, we will do an experiment with 8 PSK 1000 at 1750 Hz. You will need the app FL Ramp for that to unpack the QR code picture. After you receive the block of data with the FL Digi with 8 PSK 1000 at 1750 Hz, please select the text block and pick it up and drop it in the box on the right side of FL Ramp. This will unpack the .png picture with the QR code. Next to that, you can scan the QR code picture with your smartphone and it will bring you to a website with some info. The block in 8PSK with the QR code will be broadcast twice with a short pause in between. Right now, we will first continue with the propagation bulletin of the RSGB. CQ, 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 calling all radio amateurs and shortwave listeners. This is GB2RS the news broadcasting service of the Radio Society of Great Britain. It comes to you from G4NJH in Nottingham. You can find the text on the RSGB's own web pages. Radio propagation report now compiled by G0KYE, KYA, I'm sorry, G4BAO and G3YLA. Last weekend saw reasonably settled conditions for the CQ Worldwide contest with DX to be had on all the upper HF bands, but 10 metres was a little lacklustre this year due to the lower solar flux index compared with 2014. 20 and 15 metres provide, pr- uh, proved to be the money bands as the flux dipped below 100. Both bands managed to remain open, even giving DX contests on 14 megs after sunset to countries like Costa Rica with Mark M0DXR's activity at TI5 Whiskey. This week has seen more unsettled geomagnetic conditions with the K-index hitting 5 on Monday due to an elevated solar wind stream. This had a southward-facing BZ component that more easily coupled to the Earth's magnetic field. We should see the solar flux index in the 90 to 115 range and we also expect to experience continued unsettled geomagnetic conditions with the K-index hitting 3 or 4 at times. This may impact on the higher HF bands, but as we are heading towards the winter solstice, our advice is to concentrate on the lower bands, meaning 40, 80 and 160 metres, where you may get some surprises. 40 metres in particular may start to open to DX before sunset, tending towards longer skip as night progresses. VHF and up, there was good tropospheric conditions for the 2-meter UKAC last week, and there's still a chance of improving tropo conditions in time for the 70s UKAC on Tuesday evening. The majority of the continent will be under a large area of high pressure with good tropo prospects 
especially across the Mediterranean, across Biscay, down to past Spain to Portugal, to the Canaries. Southern Britain, to the south of the weather front, may be able to tap into these better conditions, especially in the first part of the week. For this tropo action, remember to keep to paths south of the weather front. Beaming into northern Europe may be good. Once the front moves away to the south and the weather turns brighter and colder again, you will no longer be in a tropoducting region. It's worth checking the forecast maps during the week for signs of the high rebuilding towards southern areas. The Geminids meteor shower peaks next Sunday, the 13th, so be prepared for some good meteor scatter QSOs next weekend. Moon declination is negative all this week, so there are short moon windows and low elevation paths. The moon is very close to the sun next Friday, meaning high noise levels and losses are at maximum on Saturday due to its reaching its apogee, the furthest point from the Earth. And that's it this week from the Propagation Team. Amateur Radio Newsline Report, number 1,988, with a release date of Friday, December 4th, 2015. Hopefully, three members of the Newport County Radio Club might actually be thought out by now after their recent adventure on an island in Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. Paul Zilverswig, N1PSX, Paul Mankowski, KC1AQP, and Rich Russell, KC1ARO, packed their gloves, winter jackets, and some tow warmers, and with their radio equipment, headed to Gooseberry Island November 30th to activate it in the U.S. Islands Award Program. Calling CQ 120 meters with the club's call sign W1SYE, they accomplished exactly what they'd set out to do, just as the club had done in September on Turnip Island in Connecticut. And so, Island MA056S became a reality. Russell told Amateur Radio Newsline, however, that this time the November temperatures were a bit more challenging than on Turnip Island. Russell said, quote, It was somewhere between 36 and 48 degrees, and there was a pretty stiff wind, about 15 knots. We dressed warmly, but it was still pretty chilly, end quote. Running 80 watts into an NFED dipole, it must have warmed them, though, to make those all-important 32 contacts, ranging from snowbound Wyoming to such DXCC spots as Italy, Canada, Serbia, Belgium, and a notably balmier Puerto Rico. In fact, if anything needed warming more than they did, it was the team's lithium-ion phosphate battery. As Russell noted, quote, they don't like freezing temps. That's when the men decided to activate just one more thing, the toe warmers they had brought along to put in their shoes and gloves. But they found it also fit nicely with the battery. Said Russell, quote, that worked pretty well, and it didn't even overheat the battery. Just took the edge off, end of quote.